everybody. I'm Karen Lynn Pierce. Welcome to the to She Is Strong. Welcome to the Sisterhood. Boy, do we have a show for you tonight. We're going to talk about motherhood, and that might scare some of you, <laughs> and it should if you haven't had kids yet, but it is the most wonderful, trying, amazing, incredible thing. I have a group of women on the couch with me tonight that I can't wait for you to hear their stories and how God's going to use them. It has been a trying week, but that just means that God is going to show up and show out. If you happen to hear a train, <laughs> we are in Calera, Alabama. And if you know, you know. And if you're not from Calera, there's a train literally right outside the store. We're just going to keep talking. So we hope you stay for that. Just listen to the train. Let her munch in her childhood. <laughs> Do this like my, my, my grandbaby does. My name is Karen Lane Pierce. I'm not just a mom. These are not just moms. We, we have lives and loves and, and, and jobs and all of those things. So we're going to talk to, tell, I'm going to introduce you to everybody. Everybody's going to introduce themselves, tell you about themselves so you know them. Again, I'm Carolyn Pierce. I, I, you know, we together run She Is Strong, but also mm -hmm. I am the wife of Kane. I am a real estate agent for Keller Williams Metro North, by the way, shout out to my job, um, who I love. And I have two incredible daughters, Megan and Peyton, who are the greatest gifts, except for my grandkids. <laughs> Kidding, I love them all, but being a lolly is just a pure joy, and I am eat up with it. I, I'm going to admit it, I have way too many pictures on my phone. I'm sorry, but I'm not sorry. Um, and then I have two son-in-laws who are amazing. I have Dalton and Dylan. They are incredible people and men who make my daughters better every day. They are just God sent. I prayed for them, and boy, did he show up and show out. And so I am a fairy. And then I have nine brothers and sisters. You may not know that about me. And they have significant others. I have a wonderful family. Um, and I'm just grateful every day to get to live this life. But tonight we're going to talk about being a mom and that part of our lives. And now I'm going to introduce you to Miss Ashley, who's going to tell you about herself. I'm Ashley Hodgins, um, native to Calera and all the trains. <laughs> um, I am married to my husband, Jonathan. We've been married for a little over eight years. Um, and we have one wonderful, rambunctious, redheaded little boy named John Clark. He's two and a half. Um, and we have a dog. His name is Maverick. He's also wonderful. I was a fur mom before I was a human mom. Um, I'm a nurse practitioner. I work at Greenview Medical Center in Birmingham. Um, I find my purpose in you know, caring for patients and you know, my awesome purpose in being a wife and a mother as well. Hi, I'm Sarah Harris, and I'm a mom of three children. Um, I'm a teacher. First, let's start with that. I'm a teacher of <laughs> little bitties. They're first graders. And um, I'm a mom of three. I have a daughter, Brooke, Caitlin Brooke, and she's married. And I have a wonderful son-in-law who loves my daughter and my granddaughters so much. I have two granddaughters that they gave to me, and I'm so thankful I let my daughter lived through the teenage years so I could have grandchildren and, <laughs> and at seven eight eight, you are almost five and will be four in September and then I have a son Zachary Forrest and um then uh, my youngest daughter is Emma Grace and um I absolutely wanted to be a mom ever since and a teacher ever since I was a little bitty girl at the age of five I knew that that's what I really wanted to be and um, felt that purpose on my life at a very young age. And so I like probably put too much into it sometimes, put too much of myself into being a mom and a teacher um, to where it overtook sometimes, but I find so much joy in that role in my life. Awesome. Hi, Miss Becca. Hi, I'm Becca. <laughs> um, I have a husband named Jeremiah, and we've been married since 2020. Um, in the midst of COVID. Mm. And oh, then wow. we had our son in December of 2022. His name is Nicholas. Mm. So he's, he's sweet. He's running around everywhere and saying new words every day. Mm. And um, I'm a 2K teacher at a preschool. Okay, so it's my turn. Yes. 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 <laughs> right. um, my name is uh, Connie McDonald. Um, let's see, I am a paraeducator. Um, so I'm joining the teachers here. I'm a paraeducator. Um, I um, have been married to an amazing man, um, Sammy McDonald, for about 32 years. Wow. Um, That's awesome. I'm very grateful. 
grateful. Uh, and I don't know what I'll do without him because uh, he keeps me in check. Uh, oh, and there I go. And we have four beautiful children. Um, we have a daughter uh, that's 32. Her name is Oriana. Uh, not 32. 36. Uh, <laughs> we get in trouble. Ooh, she'll be 37 um, next week. Um, we have twin boys, um, uh, Christian Blake and Brian Christopher, that are 29. Um, and um, Brian is married to um, my beautiful daughter-in-law, Cheyenne. And um, I got also blessed us with uh, with uh, our daughter Jada Marie McDonald. Um, unfortunately, um, four years ago we lost Jada, but um, she is with the Lord and uh, He is taking care of her right now till we get to see her again. Um, let's see what else I want to say. And I'm also um, venturing, taking a new adventure in my life. Uh, I have been out of high school now over 40 years mm -hmm. and I've just decided to go back to college wow. and so wow. I'm pursuing yeah. my bachelor's yes. in sciences yes. and so and I want to be a special education mm -hmm. uh, teacher that's yeah. what I really want to do and I also would like to be a reading interventionist mm -hmm. as well wow. but I'm very grateful to be here uh, today is Jada's um, anniversary of her 23rd uh, birthday today mm -hmm. and I just know this is totally God that I'm able to be here today and to be with yeah. you guys and oh. to be surrounded by other godly women and just to learn I can't wait to hear you guys stories yeah. as well thank you for letting me share oh, thanks. Wow. Thank you. Yes, All right. wow. yeah. thank you that was just God. Yes, that was just God. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. uh, my name is Lisa Villa, also known as Mamie. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> um, my story, I, I was married, I've been married twice. And um, I was, my last husband, uh, we would have been married 39 years, so he went on to be with the Lord uh, 2021. Mm -hmm. But during that time, I had a child that I birthed, Charles Michael Jones. Mm -hmm. And um, then um, I had another son come into my life, mm -hmm. Michael Bruce Venable. Mm -hmm. And um, the beautiful thing about him is that he, um, before Bruce and I married, he came, Bruce brought him to my mother's house. I don't want to cry, I'm sorry, excuse mm -hmm. me. And he asked me, Michael Bruce asked me, he said, can I come live with your daddy? And he was, I believe, 11. And from that moment on, I I just stepped in. I, he was just like mine. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the bad, the good, and the ugly. That's right. Some of the things they tell me about now that him and Michael did <laughs> on the beach. <laughs> don't, don't tell me anymore. Don't tell me anymore. Anyhow, um, so um, we had, Bruce had a daughter named Stephanie, and she stayed with us for a little while, and then she wanted to go live with her mama. <laughs> so I, I think I come under that category, and y'all correct me if I'm wrong now, because I'm in another generation, y'all. I represent the 70-year-old. <laughs> um, it's called blended. That is the best. So I blended, yeah. me and Bruce together, we blended mm -hmm. uh, for 39 years. Now yeah, the wow. first five years was a booger bear. <laughs> but bless God with God, he helped us. Yeah. Wow. So any of you, and whoever you are that's watching this, if you're thinking that you're not going to make it, well, if you do it by yourself, you won't. Yeah. I mean, I mean, Even if you love each other, the husband and wife yeah. loves each that's other right. dearly, mm -hmm. you need the Lord. That's that's right. Right. So yeah. we're here, we're here, uh, and I know somebody's watching that there's going to be something said, because like Karen said, um, I, I, I missed the exit. Uh, my neighbor had a fire today in the house, so I mean, it's been up and on. But mm -hmm. it, anyhow, we're here. Yeah. We're here to to just be honest and transparent. Yeah. And if there's a way we can help you, that's all. That's the whole desire. So, 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 and to give God glory, of course. Yes. Yes. Amen. Amen. 
I said it before we started, and I'll say it again. We are here to encourage and inspire you, and everyone on this couch has a story. And we hope when you look at these couches, you see a bit of yourself, or you hear a bit of what you're going through right now in life. And we hope that the words that we say touch your heart and, and change your path. That is really the whole point of this whole scene. When God gave me the vision, this couch is right here today, or what I pray. This is what He showed me. I want. He said, I want from 20 year old Beck is from the 20 year olds, yeah. 30 year olds, 40 year olds, yeah. 50 year olds, 60 year olds, and 70 year olds. <laughs> we want to tell everybody has a voice and a different perspective and a different view, mm -hmm. depending on where we are in life. And I want all of those views to be seen in mm -hmm. this women. There's not just my generation going through stuff. Becca's and younger than her are going through stuff. So we hope as we talk and share that you can relate, you can see yourself, and we can inspire you. And I'm going to start. Normally, last week, we actually had just one verse. But God really spoke to me because while all of us are moms, we're in different places as mothers. My journey wasn't their journey. Obviously, there are some things I, I, won't, I, I can't even imagine. The loss of a daughter. That's not my, that wouldn't be. We all have a verse that kind of helped us. And I'm going to do it, the one, I'm going to share the one that I used as a mom. Um, and we are going to refer to our notes because we are not professionals. <laughs> <laughs> so don't judge, okay? We're just normal people out there sharing, our, doing our best. Um, but I will, the first verse, and I will use my readers because I am the older generation. So you will, you will see my, okay. my readers on me. Um, it's okay. So the, the verse that I'm going to share is probably the most popular verse as a parent and one that probably a lot of you, I'm sure if you've been in church, you've heard. Proverbs 22.6 says, train a child, up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Now, the thing that's cool to me about this verse is the idea of what my pastor talks about, which is a deep dive, where I, you don't just read the verse, you go down deep and you figure out what the words mean. I always kind of, like, I was thinking this was a promise, but it's not. It's a warning. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wow. It's a, if you train your child, which is us, parents, if we train our child in the way, well, there's only one way. Mm -hmm. There's God's way, and the Bible makes it very clear what that way is. There's not, but those are black and red letters, and they are the way. And, 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 and as a young mom, there were times where I went again, and, it's a, and whenever they talk about, he will, let's see, I guess, sorry, I don't know where you're talking He should go. When he is old, he will not depart from it. Well, that's, we're dealing with children's wills, babies' wills. Mm -hmm. I don't know about y'all, but if you got little kids or something you do, they have, I keep, strong wills. they have strong mm -hmm. wills, mm -hmm. and it starts as babies and children, and that's mm -hmm. absolutely normal. We're born with free will, born mm -hmm. with it. Mm -hmm. So we battle that as parents from the minute our children get here, and it is a battle, and it is a war. And, you know, I have a, a five-year-old and a, and, a, and a baby that's 15 to months old, and, and Addison loves to swim in the pool. She loves it. I love for her to swim in the pool. But when she gets tired, Lolly makes Lolly and Mama and Daddy, guess what Addison has to do? Put on a life jacket. Yes. Mm -hmm. Because I love Addison. Well, Addison is not a fan. She is not a fan of life jacket. Mm -hmm. But I love her. And her happiness doesn't matter to me. Mm -hmm. Her being well, mm -hmm. her living out her yeah. time yeah. and days. And with Harrison, love, I, I never had a boy. So this is our first boy and I'm pumped about it. It's totally different by the way. <laughs> Woo! Mm -hmm. Every day that little 15 year old wants to get on the highest thing. And I just, if I turn my head, he's, I'm like, no buddy, we're not climbing up the ladder today. You know, it's like negative Ghost Rider. We are not doing that. Right. <laughs> we are going to live through this day, and life's going to take care of you. What starts as babies, and that's what they're supposed to do, and then they get to be kids and teens. Mm. Oh, praise the Lord, Hallelujah! <laughs> and you have to. I wasn't my kid's best friend. I love my daughter. We were not best friends, and they did not like me some days. But the Word mm -hmm. told me a way to teach them, yes. and I did so. Mm -hmm. And to and, and I wish that I, I have a mom who every day showed me God. Mm -hmm. From the minute I was born until the day she passed away, I had no excuse to go wayward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I did. At 20-something, I thought I knew more than God. And from the, it's just, this is what's telling me. If I go with my will, choices that I make will lead to foolishness. Mm -hmm. And I, so those, with that foolishness, the consequences. Mm -hmm. And nobody gets away with it, y'all. Mm -hmm. I don't care where you are in life. I don't care if you're, you know, a teenager or in your 30s or 40s. We don't get away with it. There is a consequence, but if we just go to the Word, 
Mm-hmm. And we do what God says, and we teach our children those things. So that is their, his plan for them. Listen, just listen to me. Read my word. Follow my will, and mm-hmm. your life will be, oh, my gosh, how much simpler is that, right? Yes. And so the other verse that led me to was, you know, what my mama did was every day she rose up and every night she went to bed, and all during that day mm-hmm. she taught God. She, it, and it wasn't necessarily in words or pointing a finger. It was just living that life. Yes. And I, that's the mom that I wanted to be as when they were teenagers. And, you know, we had struggles. They were teenage girls. And, whoo, did they have a will? <laughs> yes. But this right here says what I still to this day want to live as a mom, as a parent, as a, as a, as a, as a um, lolly. Mm-hmm. These commandments that I give to you today are to be on your hearts. Impress them on your children. Talk about them when you sit at home, when you walk along the road, when you lie down, and when you get up. That is all day, every day, people. (laughs) I am supposed to do this all day. And like I said, that verse, I used it as a mom, but the impact of it now as a lolly is even more, I mean, it has, deep diving was the best thing I could have done because I want that legacy like my mom gave us. Mm -hmm. I want my kids, my daughters, to live these lives and to be not just pointing fingers or you have to be in church, but love God. And I want love to come from me and him to be the one who shows us the way. Mm-hmm. And as my mom put it, whenever I interviewed her, she was the first one I interviewed for this show. Jesus is the answer. Amen. So that's my mom. <laughs> so that's where I'm okay, Mammy. So I hope that touched some of you. I hope that you learned. You know, I learned something from this myself. So that's always great. Now, ma'am, I was reflecting back when she asked us about our, our verse, and I, one of the greatest things that happened to me uh, after Michael was born is John three sixteen, the just plain, I call it just the plain gospel, <laughs> for God so loved the world, mm-hmm. and I thought, because I I knew uh, about love, but I had never had that love, mm-hmm. to where it was like. It was in my belly. And when I when I looked at him, I thought, my God, me and this man produced this baby. Mm-hmm. And I was in love. I, I, and, it, and then the Lord, as years went on, he said, how much more? So this is for you. How much more? God love us. Mm-hmm. Yes. And the love only grows. Mm-hmm. It, it, I, I don't even know how to, and y'all might can put it better in, in more eloquent words, but it grows over the years. You know, and now at 70, <laughs> what's happened is that mama, me, now I'm listening to my children. And I even, now this is a not always positive, I even hear <laughs> some of the things, and I think, that's Leslie right mm-hmm. there. Mm-hmm. You, need to, shut, you <laughs> need to shut your mouth. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but then, when I'm thinking, because that scripture is the truth, mm-hmm. y'all, I've lived it. Mm-hmm. And even some my grandchildren, oh, they'll repeat back and say, well, Mammy, you said, and I'm thinking, yes, I did. Oh, my. You know, David said, let me set a watch over my mouth. Mm-hmm. But uh, there's wow. nothing like, there's nothing like that love. Mm-hmm. And I know even God, even all the mistakes, the bad decisions, I know I learn about the love of God mm-hmm. through my children. Mm-hmm. Yes. My children. The, let me say this and I'll shut up, please. Um, I'm not talking to about the, the other son, Michael Bruce Venable, which was Bruce's son, after I got a little bit further in the marriage, when I realized that baby, and he was 11, but he still was a baby, he chose me. Yes. And he listened to me. He still listens to me. Of course, now, where sort of the roles are changing. Yes. Oh, uh, I listen to them. Yes. Mm-hmm. They'll, he'll, they'll, both of them will call and say, let me discuss this with you. They'll tell me what Pastor Chris <laughs> said or so. So yes. and so yes. said, the yes. pastor said. Yes. And, and we'll go through it and we'll talk about it. But I'm thinking, wow, 
It really, mm -hmm. it really has helped me. They yes. get so wise. Oh, they got, yeah. My daughters really. are so wise. I was like, I don't remember being that wise at that point. <laughs> Thank the Lord. But now, <laughs> see, now I am so thankful I can listen mm -hmm. without judging. Mm -hmm. I can listen. Mm -hmm. And I can take, he, I can heed their words, mm -hmm. you know. Because mm -hmm. they're out there, they know things that I don't know, and I know that they protect me. So, thank you for letting me share. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. All right, Miss Sarah. All right, my first, when I think of motherhood, my journey as a mother was 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 through 18. And it says, Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. And so the way it helped me was just, or still helps me as a mom, is just remembering my source, <laughs> remembering my source of joy when yes. I see those children, yes. and remembering, oh, you know, yes. how blessed I am to be their mom and yeah. to yes. have God's love and, and see them have God's love. So yes. remembering that source of joy, even when hard things go on, mm -hmm. counting it all joy, like it says in James, praying without ceasing, and you all got to know if you're a mama, Mm. You gotta be a praying mom yes. uh, for yourself, for your children. That's right. There were times where I was literally telling the enemy to leave my child alone, yeah. okay. and every night oh, yelling right. out and saying, "Leave my kid alone." Yes. And I would watch that it happen, but needing that prayer and praying without ceasing. And actually, a friend of ours that we have in common that we talked about recently about this is like, and I looked into it like you were talking in deeper because I like to. Um, Bible map or verse map, yeah. and um, talking about how you're in a prayerful state at all times. So you're speaking uh, little inner prayers, quick mm -hmm. inner prayers to God all day long. Yes. Yeah. So it's not that we're praying constantly, it's that you're having this constant conversation yes. with your best friend. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Where you're just like, hey, guess what just happened? <laughs> or guess what I need your help with? Yeah. Or can you give me advice? Yeah. And so praying without ceasing. And then the last one, giving thanks in all circumstances. So when you're going through a trying time with your child, mm -hmm. when it's challenging when they're toddlers, mm -hmm. when it's challenging when they're teenagers, mm -hmm. when it's challenging when they're young adults, yes. because mm -hmm. it, yes. every stage has that, yeah. is looking for the, the little glimmer of gold in every age, in That's every good. situation. Good. And so and giving thanks for that, giving thanks for the trying times, giving thanks for the gold that you see in that, yeah. one, because that is God's will for your life. In those things. Um, and so that's what sticks out to me as a mom. Well, and what else? So, yeah. Spotlights on you, <laughs> Are you ready? Oh, my goodness. Um, well, I guess what I'm, I'm thinking right now is I, I mean, I, I kind of don't even quite know where I want to begin as I, as I share. Um, um, let me put it to you this way. So I, I have always wanted to be a mommy. I, mm -hmm. I relate to yes. you, Sarah. Uh, I've always wanted to be a mom. Um, and I am so grateful to be a mom. I'm so grateful yeah. for yeah. each and every one of my, of my children. Um, you know, before I became a paraeducator and, you know, I, I was a single mom in the beginning. At first, I was a single mom and I got, had a child at the age of 21. And I will never forget just how all the sacrifices that I had to make. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, having, bringing another life into this world really made me think about how much better I had to be yeah. uh, as a parent, yeah. as a provider. But it challenged me in my walk with God. It challenged me yes. to become a woman of God yes. because mm -hmm. I didn't want my daughter to be brought up uh, in just any type of household. Sure. I wanted her to know God. Sure. Mm -hmm. And that was after I, um, you know, after I had gone through some things and I realized I needed Jesus, Yes, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. And so I ended up, you know, parting ways with her, with her father. Mm -hmm. But, and I was like, am I gonna choose 
this man mm -hmm. over Jesus? Mm -hmm. I don't think so. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't mm -hmm. think so. Yeah. Um, but God, God placed an amazing man in my life. I shared with you about mm -hmm. my husband, Sam. Mm -hmm. And I'm very grateful. And um, he allowed uh, our family to grow and uh, to to blossom to bloom mm -hmm. um, we started out in Georgia we um, had only been married we got married February 22nd um, and it was in 92 that we got married mm -hmm. so we had only been married six months but we wanted to come we wanted to be a part of a mission team here mm -hmm. in Alabama wow. to help with the church and so I was like, okay, you know, I, I would really love to do that. Well, God brought us here. Mm -hmm. And it was just my husband and I and our uh, oldest daughter, Ori. And um, as we, through the years of us being here, then came Christian and Brian, mm -hmm. uh, the twin boys. Mm -hmm. And unexpectedly, uh, the, the, my boys were, they were in kindergarten. And I thought, all right. No more, <laughs> no more diapers. No doctor plans. Yeah, no more, you know, daycare. Yeah. And start saving money now. Right. And lo and behold, um, uh, God just put this little sweet angel, mm -hmm. whom, which I thought she was a bladder infection. <laughs> um, I thought Jada was a bladder infection. And I know. I got her little picture right here on me. I'm wearing Jada right here on me right now. But anyway, um, and during that time, we, our family was, we were going through a very difficult time financially. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was so worried um, that, I, you know, how were we gonna make it? How, you know, here we are, we live in this tiny apartment, a family of five, we're about to add another addition. Mm -hmm. How are we going to make it? You know, what's what's going to happen? You know, and um, you know, God really showed out. Mm -hmm. God, when I say He showed out, yeah. and what I mean by that is that. Um, so I, you know, after Jada was born, you know, there was there was nothing wrong in my pregnancy. Everything was fine. Mm -hmm. I remember going to on a prayer walk that morning before I went to have my C-section. And I was like, Lord, you know, I'm, you know, Jada's coming today and <laughs> I'm so excited. And, you know, I just felt like, man, you know, Lord, you are with us, <laughs> you know, and, you know. So after we have Jada, you know, I have my C-section. I just noticed after I had her that she did not want to eat. Mm -hmm. And I was like, mm, she's fussy. And the nurses are like, we got, we got her, we got her. You go to your room and lay down. So I went and rested, you know, I went and rested. And I was like, but honey, did they bring the baby? You know, where, where, where is she? And he's like, oh, the nurses, say, you know, she's still down in, you know, in the nurse, you know, in the nursery. But so we find out on Tuesday, um, the doctors were like, hey, at 11 p.m. at at night and they're like we want you to come down we, we want you to come down and see us you know mm -hmm. and so we're I'm in a wheelchair my husband's pushing me in a wheelchair because mm -hmm. I've not only had a c-section but I had a tube ligation mm -hmm. and so I'm like you know we're waiting because we're thinking oh we're gonna go see our baby mm -hmm. as soon as we walk in the doctors you know, they block us and they say, no, we want you to come in this room and talk with us. We want you to come and talk with us. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, proceeded to let us know that our daughter had congenital, a, con a congenital heart disease. Mm -hmm. And that, um, to make a long story short, if we did not get surgery, that Jada would die. Wow. Mm -hmm. she, she would die. And we were like, and they're like, well, this is what we suggest, you know, um, we suggest that you go to Boston. And, you know, we're kind of looking, my husband and I were looking at each other like, what, 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 you know, what are we mm -hmm. talking about? You know, the, we're trying to grasp everything sure. that's been said to us. And, um, and we made the decision 
my husband asked this uh, cardiologist, if this were your child, what would you do? And he said, I would take my child to Boston mm -hmm. because at the time UAB couldn't accommodate the need that she had. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, to make a long story short, I'm gonna fast forward a little bit. So <laughs> Jada does go to Boston, Jada goes to Boston. She has that surgery. She makes it through the surgery. She is, um, you know, she's, she's doing well. And we end up having to go back for a second surgery. Mm -hmm. uh, and that was unexpected, but we did have to go back. Mm -hmm. And we fast forward 16 years down the line. Wow. So she is 18. Oh, wow. She is, she's 18. And Amazing. yeah, she's 18. Um, she's a beautiful, mm -hmm. thriving young lady. Um, Jada was born with the George syndrome, which is a mild deletion of the 22nd which caused her to have issues with her learning. Mm -hmm. um, so she had intellectual delays, learning delays. So, you know, so you can imagine what life was like for her. You know, it yeah. was a little tough in, you know, through school and everything. But one thing I could say about Jada was she was the happiest mm -hmm. young lady that I've ever known. Mm -hmm. She's very happy, um, enjoyed life, uh, loved to hug people. Mm -hmm. um, she was just an incredible young lady. Uh, and I'm, I'm so grateful that God said, hey, you know, you're gonna, you're gonna have this little bladder infection. <laughs> and, and something that I didn't say beforehand was that I was on birth control pills. Mm -hmm. I was on birth control pills mm -hmm. and um, what happened was I missed a couple of days. Mm -hmm. I missed a couple of days. That's a story for a lot of people. You know? Yeah. And I was like, what? <laughs> you, know? <laughs> you know, blown away by it. Um, so, uh, I'm gonna fast forward my story a little bit because it's a very long story. Mm -hmm. So that's why I'm fast forwarding because mm -hmm. I want um, everybody to be able to share. Mm -hmm. But so we find out in December of 2019 that, you know, Jada, you know, Jada's not feeling all that great. And mm -hmm. she had been complaining to me and she said, mom, she said, I feel like when I'm, walking around school, I feel like I want to just pass out. Mm -hmm. And I said, Jada, I said, man, I need to talk with the nurse so that anytime that you feel that way, that we got a buddy system for you where mm -hmm. somebody can walk you sure. to the nurse and, you know, so we, you know, kind of talked about that. And so in November, uh, we were having Thanksgiving dinner with friends and we noticed that she was very tired. So that was in October when she shared that with me. Mm -hmm. And then in November, she was you know, still just very tired. Ready. She would go to school, come back and do her work and just lay down very fatigued mm -hmm. physically. Mm -hmm. And um, and we kind of noticed her perspiring heavily and not have done anything mm -hmm. as she was wow. perspiring. So, and that was, uh, that's kind of scary when you see that with somebody sure. because you know something's not right, something's mm -hmm. going on. Right. But, so we went to the doctor December 15th of 2019, went to go and have a, they like took a camera and put it down mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, her chest because her throat went down her chest because they wanted to see what her heart looked like. We wanted to see, if we needed any more surgery, sure. uh, if we could even do another balloon procedure, because we had done a lot of those. Mm -hmm. um, and they took her back, and when they came back to us, they were like, we were like, man, y'all done fast. Did y'all do that fast? And they <laughs> sat us down and they said, we, we can't do an, another balloon procedure. You know, we're gonna have to do another open heart procedure. Mm -hmm. Wow. And, you know, my husband and I were like, you know, we just kind of took a deep breath and 
and both of us were afraid. Both of us were scared. We we're like, okay, so the two surgeries that she had, she was like a toddler. She was an infant, a toddler. Mm -hmm. Now she's a young lady. She's a young lady. She's 18. Mm -hmm. So we had to sit down and talk to her. We had to sit down and talk to her about the surgery, what she was going to experience. Um, we also had to ask her questions like, do you want to have children? Um, and the reason we asked that question is if she had gotten a mechanical barrel, that in some way would affect her from having mm -hmm. children. Um, and she was like, no, I don't want any children. <laughs> I want to stay single all my No, And she was just so, she was so funny and so carefree about everything. And um, um, so we, you know, had the night before her, we, we decided to, so we decided to have the surgery. Mm -hmm. And uh, so I will never forget that, that Wednesday night before her surgery, my sons, we all had a dinner together. We all had spaghetti, which is her favorite meal. We had spaghetti together. Mm -hmm. And we just had fun laughing and joking and talking. And, and my dad said, I want to pray with you guys. So we, after we ate, we all got on a conference call and you know, we were all praying with my dad. And you know, I was just like, Hey God, I, I trust you. God, I know you got this. And I'm not, you know, trying so hard. We're trying so hard just to be faithful and to trust God, you know. And that night, there was a lot to do. There was prepping her, getting her a, a shower, getting her ready, making sure all the sheets were clean on the bed, just everything to make sure she was ready for that procedure the next morning. And so um, Jada wanted to play with me. So she was going, you know, like, mommy. <laughs> mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, I was so. <laughs> we well, you know that. Just yeah. Yeah. You I know was stressing that. and yeah. I was not in the mood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I was not in the mood to play. And dad was like, don't, Jada, don't play with mom. <laughs> 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 you know, and so then the night, then we got into this little teeny tiny disagreement, little argument that night, and it was over something with the cell phone, and I realized that she had not one of our numbers in her cell phone, and she had all this stuff on her cell phone, and I was like, Jada, where, where's your numbers? Where's your numbers on your cell phone, you know? So she was upset with me, and I said, "I'm sorry, Jada. Um, please forgive me. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm tired. I know you're tired. So I'm going to bed." So we got up the next day, and we are heading over to Children's Hospital. We tell her brothers bye, tell her sister bye, and um, you know. Um, we're in the car, and Jada loves the song Jesus, Jesus Alone. Mm -hmm. And so it's like, Jada, what do you want to hear? You know, we're on the way to the hospital, and mm -hmm. she wants to hear Jesus Alone, and we're listening to it, and we're singing. And she's like, Mom, I'm so glad that you see. She said, you know, when I have my surgery, you know, man, my heart's going to be better. And, you know, maybe we can play softball because she's never able to do any sports or anything. So fast forward, you know, we had our surgery and, um, you know, it's taken them a little while to do her surgery. It took a lot, it took maybe a couple of hours, three hours longer than we expected, which made it about eight hours. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, she finally, the surgeon finally comes and says, you know, Jada made it through the surgery. It was a tough surgery. We didn't, they didn't do the mechanical valve, they did the tissue valve. 
And she, she said she made it through surgery. And I jump on my phone, and my husband's on his phone. And we're like, oh, hey, <laughs> let me tell you, Tatum made it through the surgery. Praise God. You know, like, we're all so excited. <laughs> and, um, and, I wanna, and then I'm out talking to other people. Their children are in surgery, too, so I'm talking to them. We're just, you know, reaching out, talking to other people. And 25 minutes later, this um, social worker comes over and she's like, hey, can y'all come here? So they called us into a room and she said, we sat down and she said, Jada has coded, she coded. And I was like, what are you talking about? And I said, she was real like, what, you know, what are you talking about? She was just fine. And they said, on the way from OR to ICU, she coded, and we don't know why. And they're working on her right now as we speak. And so the lady had to call my other children. She said, let me call your children because my other children were on the way and so they called them and um, basically what ended up happening is that she um, they got her back after 30 minutes and I was like okay maybe there's we got some some hope here, there, you know. And then the cardiologist was like, so what the surgeon was like, now let's not get too happy because it's been 30 minutes. It was 30 minutes. And I just, my husband and I really took offense to it because we're like, you don't know what God can do. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You don't know what he can do. And um, so anyway, um, they, Jada ended up um, holding on for about 10 days. She held on for 10 days. And um, before she took her last breath, God gave me some time to spend with her. And I would read something that Maria, that I wrote. My son, Christian, and his girlfriend, Kate, this cat journal. Um, and I wrote, Shady Bug, I can't believe that you are gone. I see your body, but yet your mind is gone. How? I would love to take you home and care for you. As I look in your room, 420, I see all machines everywhere. I long to pick up and hold you like a baby. I long to see your smiling face. And joyful laugh. You are so brave and kind. You have an amazing love for others. I pray that I will finish our special projects. Owen's house volunteering at the Shelby Ridge. And um Going back to Children's Hospital, please forgive me for the disagreement we had.
back up for you, sweet Carrie. I know that you were all tired. We were all tired and trying to pack. Only if I had known that Thursday, January 30th, 2020, would be the last time that I would really see you and spend time with you. I'm so grateful that God gave me the opportunity to get you ready for the surgery. I'm so grateful. And the nurses allowed me to bathe you on Friday. I'm so happy that you had great friends like Julie and Nina and Brianna from Clear High School. I am so excited that God allowed you to be able to attend one of our school. I couldn't be more proud of you making A.B. on the road. Going to the guitar club and making new friends. Picture here that my daughter drew six months to the day that we laid her to rest. I had taken her to a therapy appointment, and the therapist would normally say, Jada, draw your happy place. And that happy place most of the time would be a family picture. This time, when she came out, this is what it was. And she drew this one. And I said, Jada, I said, who is that? And I just want to hear it for myself. And she said, oh, this is me and Jesus. And this is the haircut of my hair. And I saw this a great picture, too. But there was a part of me that I was a little afraid. Mm -hmm. Because I, she never drawn anything like that before. my daughter. I got to be with her. My whole family and friends, we got to be with her. And when I tell you her death was so much like Jesus, it blew me away because she basically bled to death. And that was nothing more that they could do. But um, God gave me the strength to give my baby a bath after she died. Mm -hmm. To wash all the blood off of her body and to fix her hair and to put lotion on her. She loved to take showers. And I wanted her to smell good. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes. And she seems like she knew where she was going. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What a beautiful 
picture and this beautiful story and I, I'm just in awe from it. There are no words. I should have made this a little bit bigger. I was she she held it up so they could all yeah. stand up close. We wanted everybody out there to see that. And, and I just, we thank you. Yeah. So great. Today is the day of her anniversary and you're here sharing with other women the worst day of your life, but the best gift of your life. Yes. If that is not strong, I have no idea what other definition there would be. Mm -hmm. I mean, and to be able to speak the words, mm -hmm. they're just incredible and amazing. And I know that there are mothers out there. I have a sister of my own who, who has lost a child and none of us can relate to that feeling. Mm -hmm. But those women, there are women out there that can, mm -hmm. and that needed to hear that story, mm -hmm. and to hear the letter to your daughter, because she still matters, and she yes. still left a presence and a footprint on this world. Yes, um, even if it was 18 years, yes. it was 18 years of yes. living and pushing lives and changing lives, and we are just glad we get to celebrate yes. with you the Thank life, you. not the death, the life yes. of Jada. Yes. But to tell people about her today, mm -hmm. and I don't know about the rest of you, but there's nothing I like to do better than brag on my children mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> and my grandchildren. Mm -hmm. And the fact that we have the gift of letting you do that today, yes. Yes. that's a gift to all of us, yes. I think. So thank you. have a scripture. We're going to read the scripture now. And then I'm, I'm going to read the scripture and that's it. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. no. Never, no. ever no. apologize. Mm -hmm. Um, Romans 14, 8 says, if we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord. And God gave me, so Jada passed on a Sunday and God gave me that scripture on Monday. And um, I just want to share and I hope my story has been able to help someone else and um you know i'm not the same person that i was four years mm -hmm. ago um and i'm thinking about toby mac i don't know how many of you guys know the song about faithful yes faithful. Yes. yes um and i was listening to that song this morning mm -hmm. and jesus was faithful he's still faithful yeah. I have my good days, I have my bad days. My daughter is buried right off of Highway 16. And every day that I pass it, and I say, hi Jada, good morning Jada. <laughs> I can go to the gravesite whenever I want to. Mm -hmm. But um, thank you, this is totally God that I was able to do this today. Thank you so much. Thank you, I thank you. Thank you. Being vulnerable and sharing yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, Beth, you're going to follow that. I know. <laughs> <laughs> That's your heart. It's a, you got it, girl. We know you do. Um, okay. Well, um, when Karen asked us to pick a, a specific verse, yeah. that was really hard for me because even just in a year and five months, there have been many verses that I've needed sure. or worship songs that I've needed especially because <laughs> I, I really I cling to music a lot and it, it speaks a lot to me of course the Bible speaks to me too but um, music is just something that touches me deep so um, starting kind of from where my motherhood journey started when I had my son mm -hmm. um, it, you know, when you're pregnant and you're planning your, your labor and delivery, you know, you have a vision of how everything's going to go, especially if you're a first-time mom. And obviously, I was told that it doesn't always go to plan. You can't really plan that specifically. Exactly. But mm -hmm. um, as, you, as you would know mm -hmm. from yeah. experience, yeah. Um, yes, we all. All of everybody. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, you and, and growing up wanting to be a mom for so long, you just, you you want your parents to come in and hold your baby as soon as you have them yeah. and all this stuff. So sure. we had um, we'd gone in to be induced and everything and, 
it took all day, of course. <laughs> but um, my family had my family and my in-laws had waited in the waiting room all day. My granddad, everybody, and so um, he was finally born. And they they brought him to me. No, well, no, they they pressed the button, and all these nurses came in because he wasn't breathing. Um, and he, I didn't see him, but he was blue or purple. And so they took him to the little incubator and worked on him. Um, and I was like holding my breath until I heard him sure. cry, you know. Yes. So yes. Um, my husband went over and was like with him and or, or well around them while he they were working on him. And and I this whole time I didn't shed a tear. I didn't say a word. I was just like pause wow. because I can't do anything until he's okay, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. So. Um, they finally get him, you know, breathing, and they found that he had a hole in his lung. And so wow. he finally started crying, and he was fine. They took, they they wrapped him up real quick and let me see him for a second, and then they whisked him off to the NICU. Um, mm. So mm. that was really hard for me because I had plans. I had sure. a vision of how I wanted this to go. Yeah. Obviously, everybody does. Obviously, that always does not happen. So, um, but... I just um, I wanted I wanted to share that because if if you're planning to have a baby one day or if you are pregnant right now and you're you know you're about to be a mom or you are a mom because yes. you have a baby in there yes. <laughs> but I just uh, it's it's easy to say I'm going to trust God through all of this I'm going to trust God no matter what happens but when yes. it happens yes. that's when it comes down to it yeah. like. Your, your trust is really tested. That's right. Your faith yes. is tested. Your hope, mm -hmm. you know, who is your hope in? Because in that moment, you have to cling to him yes. or it's all going to fall apart. I so um, I had a couple verses that I couldn't pick between, but I'm going to pick. It was, it was Psalm. Read them all. It's fun. Psalm. We don't even care. We want you to share. Psalms 121. Um, I love the whole thing, but I'm just going to read the first couple. It's, I lift my eyes to the mountains. Mm -hmm. And that makes me think, you stand on, you know, on your front porch and you lift your eyes to the mountains. Mm -hmm. You're like, what do I do? You're at, mm -hmm. you're at a standstill. You're at your breaking point. What am I going to do? Right. Where does my help come from? Mm -hmm. My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. And then down in verse 7 it says, and I, I, I read this while I was in the hospital when Nicholas was in the NICU. It says, The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forevermore. Um, and it was just, it was just really hard first being in that hospital room and your baby's somewhere else and you can't move, you can't go anywhere because you're stuck. And so um, you just have to trust that the Lord is, is there with him. And, and we didn't know how bad a hole in your lung is. That sounds horrific, you yeah, know? Yes. Like he obviously can't breathe right now, you know? Mm -hmm. But it's actually pretty normal, pretty wow. common. I didn't know that. I've had a hole in the lung. Did you? It only yeah. happens, supposedly it happens to boys. Really? Oh. I'm not a boy. <laughs> <laughs> obviously. But all of that, that say, like, Things happen, and and who are you gonna who are you gonna turn to? Yeah. Who are you gonna put your hope in at that moment? Right. You can say that all day long. I trust yeah. God, no matter what happens, no matter the circumstance. You're but them. in mm -hmm. that moment, are you really gonna turn to Him? Are you really gonna trust Him? And after that, all happened. We obviously go and visit Him and see Him. He's the most perfect little thing in the whole wide world. Of course. Five little pounds. <laughs> um, oh. And then we get back to the room and after a little while I actually had an emergency and I hemorrhaged. Oh, wow. And that so, was not so that was not that planned. Was not planned. <laughs> that, was, that was a random circumstance. Yeah. So um and that was very scary because I also thought that was common, but that's not common. Right. And nobody prepares you for that kind of thing. Nobody yeah. nobody tells you, hey, you know, you might, this might happen to you yeah, yeah. after, but um, it was very scary for me and my husband just having to sure. sit there and, and watch, you know, but I mean, through it all, I just, 
I, I did not, it was very weird. I did not shed tears. I was just like stunned and shocked, kind of traumatized about what sure was happening is. because I wasn't prepared. Wow. And I just kept going through like worship songs in my head. Like these are the words I'm trying to speak to my, my spirit mm -hmm. while this is happening. Mm -hmm. And I just couldn't like really get it out. But mm -hmm. I had it in my head because I feed my heart those things on yeah. a daily yeah. basis. Mm -hmm. So so whatever you feed yourself is mm -hmm. going to come out in those traumatic moments mm -hmm. and those um, unexpected times. So just just keep, you know, wow. keep feeding your spirit what you need. And, mm -hmm. and that as work. a mom, I mean, mm -hmm. just I'm all over the place right now, of course, mm -hmm. but um, just and you are perfect. Yeah, Enjoy. it's just it's just motherhood is so unexpected. Mm -hmm. <laughs> even just in 15, <laughs> that's even that's even the wisest just, thing I've heard. Yeah, you are absolutely right. Even just in 15 months of being a mom, myself, is so it cute. unexpected things come? So and yeah, you, you are a testament to that too. Yes, yeah. obviously. <laughs> yes. Wasn't that the name of the book that they do? Expect the unexpected. Isn't that a So I'm, I'm, I'm 57. I'm sorry, I forgot to tell you, but I'm 57. I'm close to 60. Hey, I'm close enough. You know yeah, what? You're girl. supposed to be here. All right, Miss Ashley. Say the best on you. It's all you. You got this. Drink all the water you need. <laughs> you saved me for last because you know I'm going to get over my seven minutes. Um, <laughs> seven and minutes and 45 seconds. Please, no, you are tired. No. Go ahead. Um, so I'm not going to share my scripture just yet because it, it comes kind of later That's fine. in my story. Okay. Um, um, my journey to motherhood was not um, normal or what you, what most everyone goes through. Right. Um, now there are people who walk the same way that I've walked. Um, we'll go back to 2015. Um, that's when I met my husband. Um, and that's also when I was diagnosed with endometriosis. Um, I remember waking up from surgery and my husband, at the time my boyfriend was there, my mom was there, and, and I, I asked the question, I said, did, did they find it? Did they, do I have it? And my mom said, yes, you do. And I remember I, in the recovery room, I burst into tears. Um, knowing what that meant for me in my journey to motherhood, knowing that it would not be easy. Mm. Um, it wasn't easy for my mother either. Um, Jonathan and I got married in 2016. Um, 2017, I was in school to get my master's. 2018, I graduated. Um, the plan, <laughs> you talked about plan, the plan mm. was after I finished my master's for us to start trying to have a family. Yeah. Um, I lost a job. Um, three months after that, my husband was in a really bad car wreck, um, wow. causing us to miss my best friend's wedding. Um, two months after the bad car wreck, he um, was septic, and we were in the hospital on Christmas Eve. Mm -hmm. um, so nothing was going as planned. Finally, everything kind of settles out in 2019. Everything's better, mm -hmm. um, and we start trying to have a family. Month after month, no success. Um, finally, in 2020, um, leading up to 2020, I just, in my mind, I had this struggle with, God, why not me? Why not me? Sure. Why not me? What am I uh, doing wrong? What did I do wrong, God? Mm -hmm. In January 2020, I told myself, I said, you're going to get your relationship right with God, and then he's going to see fit to, be, to make you a mother. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. 
I started a Bible study with the ladies at my church, and then when I finished that, I went and I bought another Bible study, and another one, and another one, and um, then COVID happened, and I kept Ooh. going. More, more Bible studies, more Bible studies, and in May of 2020, um, we were referred to a reproductive endocrinologist, um, Alabama Fertility, and um, Again, still in my mind, you know, God, I'm spending all this time in your word, and now I'm trying to become a strong Christian woman worthy of being a mom. Mm -hmm. And it still wasn't happening. Um, and so we went through two medicated cycles with no success. We did um, an IUI with no success. Um, and then August of 2020, um, Jonathan was working out of town, so we kind of had to take a little break from things. Um, and my small group, my disciple group at church, we had started a Right Now Media study, um, the Book of James, mm -hmm. led by Francis Chan. Um, mm -hmm. And I was preparing for our Tuesday night gathering, listening to Francis' teaching, um, sitting at my kitchen table. Um, he goes to James chapter 1, verse 27. Religion that God accepts as pure and faultless as this, to look after orphans and widows in their distress, and to keep oneself from being polluted by the world. As Francis Chan read that verse, I did what I'm doing now. The tears just started to fall. Wow. And I said, God, I said, is this you calling mm -hmm. me and Jonathan to adopt? Mm -hmm. Wow. Is this you calling us to foster? Wow. wow. That same weekend, Jonathan was home. We were celebrating birthdays. He and my dad have birthdays close together. And on our way to my parents' house, I, I turned it on and I wanted Jonathan to hear it. And we pulled into mom and daddy's driveway and I looked at him and honey, if you're watching, sorry, I'm gonna tell him. <laughs> oh. his, his, eyes were, his eyes were leaking too. Oh wow. And it was just kind of our confirmation that wow, this is kind of what we need to do. Sure. Mm -hmm. So that was August of 2020. Um, in the weeks kind of following that, I, I reached out and I had been doing reading and we had one consultation call with a, um, adoption agency to consider private adoption um and i hung up the phone and i looked at him and i just cried again i said we can't do this i said well i said there's no way i said we don't make it i said we don't have the money wow. i said we'll never be able to afford this um and so we kind of you know put a pin in it and um eventually concluded that um fostering was how we needed to go about it, and um, in, I want to say, March of 2021, we began trauma-informed parenting through DHR, um, wow. and in May, we wow. were licensed as foster parents. Um, my disciple group, I know y'all are watching, <laughs> um, <laughs> they got together and threw a surprise baby shower for me. Oh, um, so um, that. Something that I never thought I would have. Yeah. Um, it was gift cards and books and all these things to have for when we get that first first, first phone call. Um, we were licensed and we were so excited and so pumped and I, I called our representative at DHR probably at least once a week. Like, do you have anybody? Do you have anybody? Do you have anybody? Well, finally in June, um, we received not one, not two, but three yeah. wow. um, children no, in no. our home. Um, a baby boy, nine months old, a five-year-old little girl about to start kindergarten, and a nine-year-old wow. that would turn 10 that August. Um, they were all siblings. Um, and we might have been a little crazy. A lot of people thought we were a little crazy. Um, and they they were with us for about a month, um, and that particular placement, and each one of those individual children fulfilled a desire that I had as a mother. Mm -hmm. I wanted a baby. 
I got that in that nine month old. Wow. I wanted a five year old that I was gonna get to take to kindergarten for the first first day of school. And I wanted a little girl who would be my best friend and go to Starbucks and talk with me like I did with my mom. And we did all of those things in the short one month that they were with us. In July of 2021, they, um, they left and they went to another home, um, which ended up being their forever home. So I have a peace knowing that me and Jonathan, we were the last foster home that they knew. Right. Um, and the night before they left us, I sat down with the oldest because I told Jonathan, I said, She's not leaving our home without hearing the gospel. Mm -hmm. I sat down with her in the floor of their bedroom and I talked to her about how to know Jesus lived in her heart and I shared the scripture with her and and um, she said, I did that at camp. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she said, I did that at camp. And she, she reassured me and she said, I know Jesus lives in my heart. Mm -hmm. and, and I had peace when they left us as, as bad as it hurt. And I mean, and, and we cried, and I was still cried, thinking about how bad it hurt that, that night, going on to an empty house. Wow. But um, if the only reason they were in our home was for me to share the gospel with her that one That's night, right. That's right. then it wasn't in vain. We did what we were supposed to do. That's right. Um, after that, we didn't get called for several months. Mm -hmm. um, and we went kind of back and forth. What did we do? Are we going to... Are we gonna foster again, or are we gonna, you know, go through with more fertility? Um, and I, I had kind of told Jonathan, and you know, we talk about God's timeline, right? Mm -hmm. Their time. Mm -hmm. um, I said, well, if we don't get a call by the end of August, we're gonna do this. Yeah. And, um, Love it when we make rules. Yeah, I make rules. I, I, I got my rules. Got my book of rules. Timeline. Um, and we didn't. We didn't get called. Um, and we're getting to the good part here. <laughs> um, September of 2021, I again was still kind of going through my book Bible studies and everything that at that began in 2020. I still can kind of continued that. Um, I began the beginning of September. I began a study um, in the Book of Numbers um, with us in the wilderness by Martin Chandler. Um, going through the book of numbers and um, that same month we decided we were going to start planning to figure out how we're going to pay for it don't know how we were going to but we were going to try to figure out how to pay for IVF um, I went back to our fertility clinic um, September 17th I had a procedure with them to kind of get rid of the cleaning and measuring this out make sure that everything's 100% tip top shape to Put a baby in me. Um, my mother was, took me to this procedure and took me home, and I'm recovering. And um, we hadn't got a call for months for children. I got a phone call that evening. I'm still under the influence of pain medication and anesthesia. <laughs> I get a phone call, a two year old that needs placement, and I said, Well, hold on, let me call Jonathan. So I called Jonathan. He's on his way home from work, and my mom's there. And she said, Well, Ashley's still recovering, and I don't think she should make decisions right now. And, and but my mom's like, But I'm off work, and I can help. And if y'all, and Jonathan's like, Yeah, let's do it. So I called, oh I called her, goodness. I called her back, and said, Yes, we'll do it. We'll do it. Yes. Well, by the time I called her back, she said, Well, we found the found baby. Oh, and we're not getting the baby. I was like, Okay, okay you know, mm. it's good. Mm. Two days, Saturday comes. Sunday afternoon, another phone call. Hey, we got another another child, you know, needs placement. I said, yeah, sure, yeah, call me, let me know, you know, when we need to come, you know, whatever. A couple hours go back, call me back. No, we found, we found another placement. Your poor heart. Your poor mom. But listen, <laughs> listen. <laughs> the good's coming. The good's coming. Um, September 21st, 2021. Started like every day had for the past year and a half. I got up, I made my coffee, I sat on the couch, I opened my Bible study. Today I'm in Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you, be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. 
number 624. A verse that I had hanging above the crib, mm -hmm. which our nine month old had slept in. A verse that I prayed over our three children when they were in our home. A verse that I continue to pray for our child, wherever they are, whoever they are. That morning, God turned my heart from sorrow and lacking joy in the absence of a child in our home to love and forced me to see the abundant blessings he had given me. I wrote a prayer that morning thanking him for the freedom, the joy, and the peace I have in my salvation with him. I go to work. At 8.30 that morning, I get a phone call. I'm at work. I didn't answer it. It's not a phone number I don't recognize. I check my voicemail. Ashley, it's Angela Powell. Please return my call. Mm -hmm. Angela Powell is a doctor in Monroeville, Alabama. She is married to my father's high school friend, his college roommate, um, who knew what Jonathan and I had been going through. Um, when I had heard that voice, my heart stopped. Wow. I said, I immediately, it has there been an accident? Are our friends Joe and Suzanne, are they okay? They live, other friends that live in Monroeville. I call her back immediately. I said, Angela, what's wrong? And in her very calm, soft, just peaceful, reassuring way, she said, calm down, nothing's wrong. Um, I'm rocking here, I'm sitting here, rocking a healthy baby boy who was born an hour ago. His mother wants him to be adopted. Will you and Jonathan adopt this baby? Of course I said yes. <laughs> there was no I didn't call him. I didn't call him. I never in my life thought that this would happen. Um Six minutes after that phone call, I received the first photo of my son. <laughs> and thank God for live photos <laughs> on iPhones because I could press it and I could hear his cry. Oh. Um, I called Jonathan. At first he was speechless and in, in a way he was guarded. Um, I think because of the heartache we had been through yeah. months prior, um, saying goodbye to our three foster children um and, and then of course the questions come well how are we going to pay for it what are we going to do with it? and i said we'll figure it out i said don't worry about it <laughs> That's right. i said we'll figure it out and then finally before i hung up the phone i said the words to my husband i never thought i'd get to say congratulations you're a dad <laughs> wow um the rest of that day was a blur um it was, of course, the biggest secret I ever had to keep in my life. Um, I didn't want to, until things were yeah. pen to paper, I didn't. Yeah. Um, we told my parents, and we told Jonathan's parents, and of course my, my employer yeah. and my work partner knew, um, and my small group knew. And eventually I did have to call and tell my cleaning lady because she was supposed to come the next day. <laughs> and my house was a complete wreck. I didn't want to pick up and clean up the cleaning lady. And, and I had to call her and tell her, that. And I had to call her, and tell her look, I, I don't have time to pick up. i got to go to Monroe and get my baby. Yeah. Um, and at 11.04 that night, 15 hours after that phone call, um, Angela brought my son into an empty delivery room and placed him in my arms for the first time. Oh, wow. Um, and the rest is history, but every single little detail, all the way back to when my daddy was in high school, God's had his hand on this. Um, Monroeville is a small rural community, um, but I have spent many New Year's Eves at Joe and Suzanne's cabin celebrating the 4th of July. I even celebrated my college graduation there. Um, it's just, just a very special family is what I call it. They're my friends with them. Wow. <laughs> family. Um, yeah. And so just, it's been amazing how God has been orchestrating the story. Um, long before I even fathomed John Clark Hodgins being my baby. Um, 
And he was made to be a Hodgins, let me tell you. <laughs> he's got red hair. His daddy has a red beard. Uh -huh. um, his uncle Matt has red hair. He looks identical to his cousin Summer. He's ain't got cool. Mm -hmm. And I remember um, our friend that we talked about mm -hmm. earlier. She's been my friend my whole life. I remember telling her in the throes of infertility and, you know, talking about foster and adopting, I told her, I said, I said, Haley, I said, I just want someone to look at my baby and say, they look like you. Mm -hmm. I said, I just want to be able to name my baby. Mm -hmm. And God did that. Mm -hmm. God did that. Um, wow. What a beautiful story. <laughs> he always, so, he's always, he's always, he always restores. Yeah, he always restores. Yes. And that, all that, as long as it was, that's all just scratching the surface. So if you have any questions and you want to know any more of the little God links, please let me know because they're so yeah. many. They're, in them. Oh, they're, they're innumerable. I love the God links. Mm -hmm. Yes. And he does that awesome. Mm -hmm. And every day, people just look for them. I really don't think that there's any more to say. <laughs> I think we have opened our hearts and our minds and our lives to all of you. As you sat here and heard these stories, my heart is, at, as much as it was broken, it was healed. <laughs> Every one of these women said something that just resonated and hit me right between the eyes. And I, I cannot think or be more grateful for this group of women that came here today. We had other things to do, but God had his own agenda. Yes. And this was it. And I do, I just want to thank all of you for coming. If you want to know about this Jesus that we keep talking about referring to in this room, please leave a comment. Yes. Send an email. We are she is strong dot sis at gmail.com. We just scratched the surface of the things that this this what the things that he's done for us, things that he has fires and trials and tribulations. Like mama said, the answer is Jesus. Yes. It is as simple as that. It was beautiful as that. And we want you to know him if you don't. And for those sisters out there that know him already, we hope that as you look at all of these faces in this room, that you are loved, you are enough. And that if you need something, even in our Christian walks, God never promised it to be perfect. Mm -hmm. But we are here for you too. If you have a prayer request or somebody you're praying for or a lost and wayward child, you know, um, all of the things, just, just send us an email, leave a comment. The best way to get in touch with us is through sheisstrong.sis at gmail.com. But know between now and the next week. By the way, we have a bonus episode. We're going to, instead of we said we were doing it too, but you know, God, once again, we make plans and he changes them. Uh, this is Mental Health Aware this month. And we want to give that attention that it's due. We do not want to ignore the fact that as women, we go through struggles mentally and, and depression, anxiety is real. So please come back in a week. In the meantime, remember Proverbs 31, 25. You are clothed in strength and dignity, and you can laugh at the days to come. Every woman in this room, as you can see, has done that. Love you all. Have a great week. Bye. Bye. Bye.